Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Today is March 4th, 2022, and today is a live stream premiere, so you guys can chat, but we're not really live, but that's okay, because we're gonna just pretend. Today, we are releasing block two of Heartfelt, and that is called the Butter Club Block. Sorry, Butter Cup Block. So if you refer to our previous video, we showed you how to make block one, and what I'm going to do is take from my box all of my background, and this is my finishing fabrics. I'll set this aside, and today what we're cutting, we're gonna cut from our background, and then what I've done is the five fabrics that we're using in block two are right here one two three four five so what I've done is if any of these were half yards I cut them into fat quarters and I've layered five fat quarters on top of each other and ironed and then this piece was used in block one so everything over here is what we're gonna cut from and I'm gonna cut first from this fabric which is C D E and F and then we'll cut our background and I'll show you how I use leftover scraps to get some of the pieces. So I have everything nice and ironed and what I wanna do is I'm gonna line up this left edge just to make sure I kinda of know where, where everything is. And I did take a look at our fabric requirement page and I looked at how it was suggested to be cut so you can see the number two is right here and so we're cutting skinnier strips and then sub cutting down and I'm gonna kind of do that but I'm not gonna go exactly from this I'm going to um, do all five at one time just make sure everything is nice and ironed and so from each one, we need one four and a half inch square. And then if you're looking at this pattern, this came in the quilt kit. And if you didn't buy the quilt kit, all of this will be available online, but the finishing and then the remaining parts will be available online. So anytime I have to cut one four and a half inch square, I'm gonna use a four and a half inch Creative Grids ruler and just cut. Now that's not what it says to do in the pattern, but this is just what I would do. And it's gonna come out exactly four and a half. And this one is fabric C. So I'm gonna put the C and then I'm gonna use this board to build my blocks in a little bit. For my D, I need four two and a half by 10 and a half inch rectangles, two two and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, and then three two and a half by four and a half. So I'm gonna kinda of cut this off right here. And I'm just gonna cut some strips that are two and a half, maybe, maybe four. And then from there we will, that's a little too short, we will sub cut down. So, right here is like the edge of the fabric, the end of the fabric. So right here, I'm just gonna cut a five inch and then we'll see what we can get from this and then we'll go from there. So you can see that even though I cut that as a square, I didn't ruin any of my fabric. So I'm gonna rotate this and then sub cut this down into two and a half. And I think the biggest thing here is cut however you're comfortable with at home. and we need some 10 and a half and then we need some shorter ones. So I'm gonna flip through here to see where my shortest one is and my shortest ones are like right here. So keep my strips together. Okay. 
make sure that I haven't chopped anything off, like that I've gotten through all five layers, I guess. And then we need 10 and a half rectangles. So I'm gonna put my ruler here. And then I'm going to line up the 10 and a half Make sure it's straight across the top and cut. Now my other strips are bigger than this. So these are gonna just go in my scrap part of my box in case I need them later. So these two are fabric D's. And I think one of the things about me that's a little bit different than you guys is y'all were probably cut directly from those diagrams. And I won't do that. I just kind of cut the way that's best for me. Now you can see right here, we don't have a straight line. So I'm gonna cut a straight line. And I think from here, I actually need three more strips that are two and a half. So I'm gonna cut at the five inch move my ruler to the two and a half. And I think cutting is a super important part of the process because the more accurate you cut, the more accurate your block will be. And I think we'll need a two and a half here, but I'm not gonna cut it yet. I'm gonna first subcut these down and see if I can get what I need before I cut that. And if your fabrics are starched, they're gonna stay, they're gonna kind of stick together when you move them because they've got that stiffness. And then again, I'm gonna cut a clean edge on the left. I'm gonna flip through to make sure I've cut through all five layers. I need two more 10 and a half. and then I just make sure it's all lined up. So these will be my fabric D's, I'll put them on my board. And now I need two, two and a half by six and a half. So I'm gonna put the six and a half right here. And these are gonna be my E's. So here's my E's. And I need, I still need three two and a half by four and a half, which I'm not gonna get from here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna cut, let's see. Yeah, I think that would be risking it too much to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut one more two and a half inch strip and my fabrics all stayed together. If they shifted, I would cut again, but they didn't shift, so. I'm gonna cut a two and a half inch strip. And then before I cut this down, what I'm gonna do is right here, just chop that off. And then I'm gonna save all of these. And if you bought a kit, you can either cut, like I did all five at one time, or individually, you should have enough fabric to do either. And I'm just folding these back up so that they can go back in my kit really nice and I can find them. Now you can see that I didn't make sure that this was 100% straight when I cut. Um, so we'll see how that looks. It might be a little crooked. So I need three, four and a half. So from here, I'm gonna use the four and a half inch Creative Grids ruler so I don't really have to think too much. And here it looks like it's a little crooked, so I'm gonna cut both sides. So I do use the square rulers quite a bit and then I'm gonna save this here and here and then I'll just have my scraps in my box like that. 
But before I cut my background, I'm gonna divide everything on the board. And what I like to do is keep my fabrics together so I can find them. So I can just kind of pull. So you can see that's a little crooked, so that's not very good. I should have looked at that before I cut it. That came out really crooked. Let me see if I have any extra fabric I can fix it with. Probably not. Um, it looks like maybe I can. So this is what I have left over. So I'm gonna fix the ones I can. Like the four and a half, I'm gonna cut this straight. Let's see. So that's a, I should have put this on top and cut from here. But so you can see how your block will look different. One is straight and one is not. So I'm gonna put that in my stack of C's. And then, let's see, I'm gonna cut, hmm. I'm gonna cut one straight that's two and a half by 10 and a half. I'm gonna cut one straight that we can use for this block and then I'm gonna buy another fat quarter so I can cut it straight because that'll drive me crazy. So from here, I'm gonna recut these. And this is kind of the stuff I do at home, guys. So. If you ever make a mistake, I make mistakes too. So I'm gonna cut a two and a half. By 10 and a half, because I do want my block to look good and I'm auctioning this off for Make-A-Wish. So I want whoever gets my quilt to have a nice quilt. So um, this one I'll replace. And then this one Let's see, I think I can get a two and a half by six and a half inch here. I can't, but I can get a four and a half. So to get a four and a half, I'm gonna do this. And just cut two and a half from right here. And then I'll cut another four and a half from right here. So basically what I'll have to do is, um, let's see. I'll have to have one that's probably crooked for the, for this block. So. This probably would have happened too if we were live. I probably would have done this live, but that's okay. So we have two that are straight. I'll have to kind of mess with them to see um, what I'm gonna do about that. So these are my C's. My D's are the rectangles. And what I like to do there is put my fabrics together so that I can easily find them instead of rifling through as I go. So these will be my D's. And then I'll put my other red here. And then my green, it just makes it easier for me to find. And then I'll do the gray. Then I'll do the big one. You can't tell as much on that big, on the big piece. You can't really tell the crookedness. And then that is my D's. Let's see, I'll put that there. That's a straighter one. And then my E's are the six and a half inch squares. And of course, you don't have to do this step. I just kind of like to show what I do at home, but you don't have to do what I do. And then hopefully, because you're watching me, you won't make the mistake that I did. So that's E, and then F 
is right here. Do that same thing. And I miss you guys today. I am in Nashville at the Needlework Expo. So we've got these two and then we'll figure these out later. Or I could just replace it with a different fabric that's in my box, actually. That's another thing I could do. Now I'm gonna cut my A and Bs. And when I was looking at these, I have to make 20 two and a half inch squares. And that's great, I could cut two two and a half inch strips. But I have all this leftover from last time. So I'm gonna just cut some two and a half inch squares and see how many I get from here. So I'll put them right sides up so I don't have to do that later. And we'll see how many two and a half inch squares we can get before cutting into our big pieces. So I'm probably only going to be able to get one strip because I don't think it's going to go across enough. So let's see, two and a half. And this won't be enough. So you can either cut this into one and a half inch strips or one and a half inch squares for your stash or you can throw it away. And then here I made sure, look, I looked and I could tell that I didn't get all the way through all four layers. So I'm gonna try that again. Make sure I get through all four layers and we'll see how many squares we get. So four, eight, and 10, 12. And I need eight more. And again, I'm gonna to check to make sure it goes through all four layers. So we only need eight more. So I'm gonna cut those from this. Cut a two and a half inch strip. And then this is how, when you have leftovers, you can just cut from that instead of having to cut a whole new strip. And again, this is not large enough for two and a half and there's no uh, pieces in this quilt after this that would be this size. So you wouldn't need to save this if you are doing exactly like me. So I need eight more. To make this easy, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna use the two and a half inch square so I don't have to think. And then I won't accidentally cut wrong. Two. So I'll put them all right sides up and these will be my bees. And if y'all have any questions for me or anything, just leave them in the chat or comments and we are happy to answer those. And then all we have left is the A's. And from there we need 10 six and a half inch squares. So that means I need two strips, six and a half, but I am gonna look at my scraps first also. So I've got this, I'm gonna iron this. Well, actually I'm gonna stack this. And I'm gonna cut a six and a half inch square. And from this, there's enough to get, it's a little bit wider than six and a half, somehow. So I got four from that and I need six more. This you can save for something else. It's big enough for another piece. And then here, I'm gonna try to get what I can get from here. These are just leftovers. From video one, and if you have any questions on where all these leftovers came from, you can look at our video one, which is our block one released. And this is our charity sew along. We're raising money for Make-A-Wish. So if you have not donated, please donate for the use of the free pattern. So this is six, we need four more. So now I do have to get into my stuff. So I'm actually just gonna cut from the corner right here.
just cut from the corner, make it easy. And then chop this little piece off and it goes in your stack. So now I have fewer scraps and then this is what's left over. These are my A's. So sometimes I think I have fun um, cutting up fabric just because it's like a work of art. You can just cut from wherever you want. And we always give, on the kits that we put together at Back Quarter Shop, we give a lot of extra, so you should have plenty. And I've already cut all my backgrounds in, in um, video one. Sorry, my borders in video one. So I have all this left over. And then what I'll do is I'll tuck these little pieces in here. Go back to my box. And then these are my leftover pieces from last time. I'll just put those here. I keep my background over here on this side and then these are just my loose scraps if we need them. And if we don't need them at the end, you can cut them up and use them in your stash. So from here, um, what I'm gonna try to do here is build the block on a board right here. And when I build that block, I'm gonna kind of think about the whole block before I piece it. So I'm gonna go step by step and build it. Now, what I want you to look at is you're gonna follow this diagram to make five different blocks. So I'm gonna make block one, and that is what our instructions are written for. But when you get to these blocks, just follow this. So my E's are right here, and we also have the diagram here, so I need one to go here. Actually, an E, not a D. Pay attention to your alphabetes. That would be step one. This is my D's. This is my, this are my E's. So here's an E. And then another E would be one of these. And then we're gonna put four D's are gonna go here. So here's one, and I'm just gonna pull, and see how when I pulled this, it made it easy. And I do encourage you anytime you're sewing to make one block before you make all of them in case you cut something wrong, you'll catch it. Because I do cut stuff wrong sometimes. Okay, so the F is here. The C is here. And then I think the bottom two are F's also, yes. I dropped my alpha bitty somewhere. That's okay. So I've kind of laid it out according to this. Now I'm gonna add my corner squares. So I've got four B's there and two A's. And so what I'm gonna do is take four B's from my little thing, draw the lines on them. And what I would do at home is I would do this, but I would only draw the lines for the first two, make sure everything works. And then, excuse me, when you're doing the rest, I would go through and um, do those all at one time. And this is a great job for kids um, or you can use the cluck cluck sew diagonal seam tape on the bed of your machine to follow your lines. I sometimes do that on small squares, but I would never do that method on these big squares because it's just too big. It's gonna, you're gonna start off your machine too far and it won't be as accurate. And this is why um, we write our instructions this way so that if you wanna build your block you can visually see where everything is because everything's nice and labeled and we made the photos big enough. So if you're using this fabric, you can follow along exactly. And if not, what you could do, if you're using five different fabrics here, you could just put a little tiny swatch of them here underneath and then just look at it and say, okay, this one is this one, this one is this one. That would help you. So from here, our first step is we need to make Take our E's and put our B's on there. Okay. 
and first thing I do is I lay it all out to make sure it looks right and then I use this glue and if I was at home doing this I would glue all of them at one time after I get my first block done so if I had done block one then I would do all I would do all of these at one time sorry my allergies and this is acorn precision seam align glue it's something that i started using recently it's not a new product it's just something that i've been using and have really liked so i've been using it and i do want to say that i use too much glue so um you're going to see some glue on the table right there because because i use too much glue and that's okay so from here i'm going to use this open toe foot it's not it's just where I can see so you can see through the hole and I'm using like a 1.5 stitch length I tend to sew with a smaller stitch length than normal most people use a 2.0 and I'm gonna just sew these And if you don't have glue, you can just use pins. I've just been doing this and I've been doing this light lately and I just really like the results. So sometimes I use pins, sometimes I use the glue. And you can see how it stayed on. It didn't um, come off even when it was off the machine. And then from here, we have to press, I think. So I'm going to move this because I don't think I need it anymore, but I might. So we'll come back to it if we do. We might need it, but we'll see. I'm going to trim a quarter inch away. And if you use the glue, you can't save these leftovers because they're glued together. And you don't want glue, so you would only use it if you're not going to do that and they're kind of I think I used way too much glue today so from here when you're looking at your pattern you're gonna press the left side to the square and you're gonna press the right side to the rectangle and the reason why is so these will nest because this one will go this direction and this one will go this direction, and you see that the bottom is going different ways. And that's gonna have it nest, or you can press open. So from here, set my seam, which means just iron it nice and flat. And by doing that, it's just gonna make it easier when you press, oh, press to one side. If you don't do that, you might find that your fabric waves a little bit, and that can be a little bit annoying. Now from here, I have this little piece that's poking out. I'm gonna just chop it off. You shouldn't have that. That means I didn't I didn't sew 100% accurately. And then I'm just gonna kind of use my design board to keep building my block. It looks like right here we're gonna pin these together. And you can see that it nests if I move from the left to the right with my seam, it'll stop because of the way I press. So if you just go, it just stops automatically. Pin right there. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to combine a bunch of steps all in one. And I haven't made this block before, so um, I'm just doing this just the way I would normally would at home. So I'll put that there. And then here, we're gonna make 10 total here but we don't need to make 10 for each block since we're making five blocks. If you take 10 divided by five, you need two, which would be this piece and this piece. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pin these together. Now you don't have to pin if you don't want to, but I have this really long seam right here and I want to pin because I want it to be accurate. So I'll put that on my design board, this on my design board, and then these two go together. So I guess we can do like a poll in the chat and y'all can tell me, are you team pinning or are you team not pinning? Um, I love to pin. Glue, pin, anything keeps me busy. And then here it looks like, oops, these two moved. We're going to be sewing these four all together, so I'll pin these two. Now if I'm in a huge hurry at home, I won't pin, but my results will not be as good. So I, even when it's small, like this, I'm going to pin. And by doing all these steps at one time, you are um, just saving time by doing everything all at once. Now we need to be a quarter inch with a quarter inch foot. So I have a quarter inch foot right here. It has a guide on the side and that guide lets me, it. your fabric hits it so it lets me sew really fast. And I'm going to chain piece all of this together really fast. cutter right here and I'm just gonna cut my pieces apart with it to save time or you can use scissors and then there's one more we need to cut put back together before we iron to save time and if I'm following my diagram green navy red gray and after you make your first block you can just follow the diagrams on page one and then just sew this quarter inch seam And I should have pinned there, but sometimes I'm going fast. So now what I will do is just follow the pressing arrows. And this piece right here, this top piece, it says to press open. So I usually set my seam, make sure stitch is really nice, press to either side, and you'll notice when I'm pressing, I'm not moving my iron a bunch. Now that looks nice. That seam looks nice. I want that point to match. And then I finger press and then press open. And then I just want it to be nice and flat. So I'll just iron it one more time before I'm gonna put it in the block. And then from here, we're gonna press this, these, this one, it actually doesn't matter in this pattern, but I'm gonna do it the way the pattern calls for. So just follow the arrows in your pattern. There aren't any seams that match up here, so you could press these any way you wanted. And these also, just press to one side, it really doesn't matter which way because you don't have seams on the top or the bottom and then we can use our design board and rebuild the block and then repin and go from there. And this is just totally scrappy. So if you accidentally, um, you know, sew like this or something, it'll, it'll be okay. 
So here I need to sew this together and then this together. So what I'll do is pin this. Now I usually put whatever has the most seams on the bottom of my sewing machine. So this has more seams. That's gonna go on the bottom and I'm gonna sew from the top. Now a lot of people don't do that, but that's just kind of habit and how I've always done it. And I just feel like I can ease it in a little better. Some people like to sew with this on top so that they keep their seams going the right way, but I just cross my fingers and hope they do. So I'll sew this. And then do the same thing. Before I iron, I'm gonna add this next side. And I'll do that same thing where I keep the seams on the bottom and sew with the fewer seams on the top. And again, that's just personal preference. Um, not everything I do um, is what you will do at home. And that's okay. And then we'll sew this and then we'll add our corner squares and almost be done. And this says to press toward the rectangles. So we'll do that. Um, and I think this block is beginner friendly for sure. This quilt is a great beginner quilt. So um, if you have, um, one, and this would make a cute pillow. If you made this and just wanted to make one block, you could make this into a pillow. You could take five of these blocks Sew them with sashing in between and make a table runner. There's lots of things you can do with this. You don't have to feel intimidated and make the entire quilt. So from here, we're gonna add our corner squares to the bottom. Now you could attach this first if you want. It really, it honestly doesn't matter. So, you can't do both at one time because this will overlap over here. So I'm just gonna do one side and this one is big. So I'm not gonna use the glue and I'm gonna show you why. Because I can actually use this as something left over. So I'm not, not gonna use glue and show you what you can do. And I do use a lot of pins because I do not want this to shift. And once you get this on the machine, it'll start shifting. So I'm gonna sew on this line, changing my foot to the open toe foot. I'm gonna leave the pins in here and in a little bit, I'll show you what to do with this. So I'll trim a quarter inch away and just keep this for a second. I just put it at the top of your board. Now from here, I do need to iron this to here. And you can see that didn't match up perfectly and that's fine. I'm not sure if it was supposed to or not. But I'm gonna set my seam for at least five seconds. Press to this side. And then we'll add the second one. and obviously make sure it's going the right way and do that same thing over here. And I do try to make sure that I can't see the back fabric from the front and once I pin it, you shouldn't see the front fabric from the back because 
that's going to give you the most accurate results. And the square is pretty, pretty big, so there's no way I would do this without pins. And like I said at home, I would be pinning all four of the remaining ones at one time to save time. move these pens kind of out of the way. Trim a quarter inch away. And I'm actually not going to press yet because I'm going to save time. What I'm going to do is with these, I'm going to sew a quarter inch away from the edge to save these. And I'm going to actually sew this together so when I press, I can press both at the same time. And what you can do is, if you want to be 100% accurate, is to fold your heart in half, put a little crease. Um, I am horrible at home to not, I always make the crease and then can't find it. And then put your center on that crease. And then pin the left and the right and then pin within. And it's looking a little wavy. So, it's got fewer seams up here, more seams here, and that's why it's wavy. Just pin it a couple times and it'll work itself in. Um, and then just so you guys know, we have two bonus quilts already released. Once we get to 80,000, we'll release one more. And at the end, I will be auctioning off this quilt along with three others. Now from here, I have to switch back to my quarter inch foot. And I'm going to sew this one. So these. my pins out and then we're going to press everything and this right here is not part of the pattern this is just me um, having fun we're gonna also press this bottom corner square towards the background and then the top we're gonna press towards the inside of the heart And right here, this should be exactly a quarter inch away from the bottom. And it is. And here, I can guarantee if you just start pressing there, you're going to have wrinkles. So you've got to get it nice and flat by pressing your seams flat first. And there is the option, you can also press this block open if you want to you are the boss of your own quilt you can do whatever you want to do so it's nice and flat and then from here I'm going to press these I'm gonna actually press these open and I'll, sh I'll show you why because I don't know what I'm gonna do with them and if I don't know what I'm gonna do with them then you should press open because you don't know what you're gonna connect them to And even if you didn't do this, look, you can still get a two and a half inch square from this. So even if you don't do that, as long as you didn't glue, you can still get, you can still get scraps from the back of that corner square. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do is trim up this block. And what I like to do is just use a rectangular ruler and get it nice and square or nice and trim. I don't want any threads hanging off. Now, one question that I have gotten recently is, do I trim all the threads? And I do not. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So you will see there are loose threads here. I don't trim any of that off. Some people do that, there's no way I would do that. That's too much time that I don't have. So from here, what you will do is you can take four different design boards and do the exact same thing, except as you're sewing, move your design board and do all the steps at the same time. And I can probably make the rest of these four in double the time it took me to do one because I try to be efficient. Now, if you bought the kit, what you can do is go here and this is block one, this is block two. I'm gonna write down where block twos are. And you can start assembling your rows if you want to, but you would have had to buy um, the kit to get the finishing. If you didn't, this will come at the end because it is free and it will come in the last month. But now I'm gonna also show you some, some designer, some other blocks, but before that, I'm gonna show you what to do with these little leftovers. So what I'm gonna do with these is I am going to see what the biggest size I can cut from this. Okay, I can get bigger than I thought. So I'm going to take a rotating mat because my pieces are small and I can actually rotate. What I'm going to do is cut these down and this mat rotates or you can just move it. So I've got that. And what you can do is on all of the um, remaining blocks, you can make a total of 10 of these and then you can use them as like you could put them on the back of your quilt or something or, you know, just do some, there's just the thing that I do is anytime I have something like this, I'll do it and then I'll either use it at the end or I won't, but it's just a fun way to keep, um, leftover fabrics and again if you don't want to do that you can also just cut two and a half inch squares from this or if you save one and a half inch strips you can cut a one and a half inch square a one and a half inch square from these two so there's a lot you can do with these leftovers i'm going to show you my block one more time my block is from the beautiful day collection by corey yoder Corey Yoder is a Moda designer and she did design this um, entire quilt for us. So um, this quilt that I'm making will be auctioned starting on September 15th of 2022, along with Corey Yoder's quilt, Lisa Bonjean's quilt, and Pat Sloan's quilt. They will all four be in different fabrics, but the one that I'm sewing live will be the one that I auction off. The next, now what I want to do is show you sample maker blocks. So these are people who work for us, they're quilty staffers, and they are making these blocks in different collections so that you can see how it looks in different styles. 
These first set of blocks are made by Carrie. The collection is Seashore Drive. Seashore Drive is designed by Sherry and Chelsea, and she is hand stitching accents throughout her blocks. She also did it on blocks one, and they're about half inch. And she's using 12 weight, and this time she used color 2021. And um, so this is Seashore Drive. And this fabric background is also from Seashore Drive. So there's an option. The next option is Flirt by Sweetwater. And Elva made these. So if you've called customer service, you might have talked to Elva. And you can see just different fabric placement. And you know, with these blocks, you could just make this all with one fabric. And because it's cut up, it's gonna look scrappy. So you could do all of this as one fabric and then a different center. And this would be a great block to put on the back of your quilt because what you could do is put your quilt label in here with your name and use leftover scraps. So this is Flirt by Sweetwater, and Elva made these. The next ones are by French General, Bonhoeur du Jour, and Lori made these. And I think this one's gonna be great because it's gonna be red. And what I want you to see is every one piece is different. Everyone places their fabric different. Um, some people starch, some people don't. So um, whatever, I would say my biggest advice is whatever you do that gives you the best results is what I would do throughout your sewing adventure. Because if you try to do something just like somebody else, just because they do it, you'll probably get frustrated. The next blocks are by Riley. She is stitching with One Fine Day by Bonnie and Camille. And I love these, they look so good. I love this collection. I love all of Bonnie and Camille's fabrics. And this is the last collection that Bonnie designed. Going forward, Camille, Camille's gonna be designing on her own. Her mom retired. So those are One Fine Day by Bonnie and Camille for Moda. And then the last set of blocks Deborah made and she is using Love Note Collection by Layla Boutique. And this one has a great background. This background has been, I'm hoping Moda will keep that in print because it's been so popular. Another thing you could do if you wanted to make your quilt totally scrappy is we use five fabrics. but there's 10 used in the block. So you're gonna always have two, at least two in each block. So let me show you that on mine. The way we placed it is we have each fabric used twice and we just separated them. But if you wanted to, you could make this 10 different fabrics to make it even scrappier. So um, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please donate to Make-A-Wish. We're trying to get to $100,000 this year. Um, Kevin and I will be donating 20,000. Mark Dunn with Moda Fabrics will be donating 10,000. And with all of your donations that we're hoping to get to 250,000. So, or not 250, $150,000. I can't do math. Um, so guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.